This video is brought to you by Morning Brew. Having spent a significant amount of time with various Android devices, my iPhone felt like it needs to, you know, catch up a little bit. This thought popped up in my head once I quickly got used to Samsung's keyboard that puts Galaxy AI to good use when drafting emails or responding to comments. Switching back to the iPhone, the first thing I did was to swap my default keyboard to Microsoft's Swift key, which is packed with features, one of them being Copilot. Okay, so with Copilot, you can use the same feature that the Samsung Galaxy S24 has, where you have some text and you tap on the Copilot icon, and then you go to switching the tone of the message. And you're immediately presented, well, not immediately, but a second later, you're presented with suggestions on how you can improve the actual writing of what, what is on the screen or what is selected. So you have funny, polite, casual, professional, and all you have to do is just accept the changes and bam, everything sounds way better. This thing is super handy. So having upgraded my keyboard, I figured it is time to fine tune my entire iPhone home screen setup. And I was like, you know what? Why not take you on a tour and show you some of the tricks I use? I can't leave you hanging, of course. So I'll do a quick tutorial towards the end of this video. Bet they know who I am, flow and clinical. Trying to walk a mile in my shoes, you look pitiful. So if you're new here, the purpose of the setup, which I called the ultimate setup, is to condense all the tools and apps that I use into a single home screen which eliminates the need to search through endless amounts of, you know, pages, folders, and lists of apps, providing a quick access to everything one might require. This is an inspiration video, the purpose of which is to motivate you to improve on your own setup, make it faster, and of course, one-off. So, if you decide to create something similar, keep in mind that the prerequisites are as follows. First and foremost is the Shortcuts app, which I use in a variety of places throughout my setup, and I'll give you the tutorial towards the end. This time around, I went back to my very first Ultimate iPhone home screen episode and integrated focus modes to help me toggle my screen in less than a second. And last but not least, my favorite widget widget app. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe because why not? Throughout the entire setup, I use a combination of apps, shortcuts, widgets, and stacks of widgets where I always keep widget suggestions turned off and in some occasions leave Smart Rotate on. During my Rating Your Setups episode, I noticed that most of you keep the Siri search icon above the dock active. Now in my case, it's off because it has no reason to exist there and you can do that yourself by going to Settings, Home Screen and App Library and turn it off. A similar type of setup will easily work on any iPhone and since I often get asked about this in the comments, keep the following thing in mind. Apple is very strict when it comes to widget management, limiting the RAM bandwidth significantly. So in case you have concerns that widgets might drain your battery, take a deep breath and worry no more. So in an overview, I have only one home screen with a little asterisk, which I'll get to. On the left, I have my widgets page and on the right, the app drawer. Let's dig deeper and start with the widgets page, which I have broken down into few sections. The top left side, as before, is my stats corner. This is a stack of widgets that either gives me info about my health, activity or sleep, as well as the charging status of my devices. This is actually a place where I would leave smart suggestions turned on so that the iPhone switches to the battery widget to let me know if something is running low on juice. Top right is my listening stack, which comprises of YouTube music and Audible, where I just started listening to my colleague Ali Abdal's Feel Good Productivity book. There is a third widget in the stack, which I've talked about before. It is a simple shortcut, which allows me with a single tap to choose where I want to broadcast whatever I'm listening to. So let's create this simple AirPlay shortcut right now. The first thing that we need to do is go to the Shortcuts app. Tap on the plus sign on the top right to create a new shortcut and tap on Add Action. Look for Playback and this is your result. Change Playback Destination. Select it. And now, instead of playing on the iPhone, we have to tell shortcuts to ask us each time because you might be at home or you might be, let's say, at the office. So ask us each time. And it is as simple as that. Now, if you want to spice things up a little bit and have maybe some feedback once the shortcut is triggered, you can go to search and look for 
vibrate vibrate device before we test it we need to rename that shortcut so tap on the name and choose rename we'll call it airplay tap done and now we can test it boom device i want to play music on let's say the chill areas homepot boom moving south i have my email client haze widget showing me what's new in my inbox and pretty much the rest of the real estate down is taken by my notion widget showing me my favorite pages so as you might have guessed the purpose of this setup is to be presented with what matters most fast and at the right time similar to what morning brew does each time it arrives in my inbox morning brew is a free daily newsletter built for busy people and professionals covering the day's most important business stories unlike traditional news morning brews coverage is actually entertaining, explaining the day's most crucial business updates and breaks down how they impact your work and everyday life. And guess what? It's not your typical snooze fest of a read. Morning Brew's witty writers bring a refreshing tone to the table, making even the driest financial news downright entertaining. What I appreciate most is that it gets me up to speed in record time. How else would I have learned that the global demand for chocolate is vastly outweighing the available cocoa supply? Morning Brew is quick, it's convenient, and I can get down to it on my own terms. Over 4 million professionals already read Morning Brew, which is 100% free and takes less than 10 seconds to sign up. So there's really no reason not to try it. Sign up for Morning Brew today by clicking the very first link in the description below. Let's get to the meaty stuff. On the homepage, I have a large widget widget, which is called Weather View. This is perhaps the most beautiful weather widget we've released so far, and it has pretty much any outside info you might require. From hourly stats to lows and highs of the day, current conditions and temperatures, and more. It works in both light and dark mode which changes according to your iPhone's display state and perhaps the cherry on top is the fact that the actual weather background changes as the day progresses. I'll put a link to this widget below alongside the current wallpaper that I use which is called grayscale tides. Underneath the weather view I have a large calculator similar to my previous episode. I had so many people asking me about the previous Calculo app but for some reason it was taken down from the app store and since I find plenty of reasons to quickly use a calc I had to find an alternative and it's called Calculator 17. It has very little customization options up its sleeve but it is still super handy to have a gesture away. As always in the dock I keep the phone app, the settings app which I constantly use, my browser of choice which is nowadays Chrome because of my dual phone identity and of course my Redbubble folder. This folder holds my messaging apps that are pretty much imprisoned and silenced and can only inform me of something by the means of displaying a red bubble. This allows me to stay on top of my notifications and not the other way around. If I see a red bubble there, I check it whenever I feel like it. Those who might need to contact me urgently can always give me a call. Now what might seem like a folder on the bottom right side is something I took directly from my OnePlus Open. I basically stole it. Where on the OnePlus it is actually a folder or more like a condensed grid of apps, on the iPhone I had to simulate it via Ouija again but it still works the same way. In fact, I called it a mini drawer. Having quick access to other apps that I use without having to open additional folders or swipe my screen is great. Plus, all those apps are narrowed and pushed down for easy one-handed use. Furthermore, since all those apps are also silenced, I don't have to worry about notifications. This being me, I can leave a widget unattended and on its own. So underneath the tiny drawer or mini drawer widget, I have my NordVPN widget which I can use to toggle on and off my VPN connection. All of those apps and icons are actually available in Widgie so if you want to build something like this yourself subscribe to my newsletter and be on the lookout this Sunday. At this point you might think this is it but did you notice my custom icon called Rec? Let me show you what it does. When I tap on it at a glance you might not realize what just happened but if you look closely at the mini drawer widget you'll notice that the apps have changed. What you just witnessed here is a focus mode that I called Rec. And I use it when we are here at the studio and I have to record something, which almost always requires some of those work-related apps. Now, if you're wondering what this focus mode looks like behind the scenes, it is basically a replica of my regular screen, but with a second mini drawer and a second custom shortcut icon to move me back and forth between the two focus modes. While in Rec, I've also allowed calls only from my wife and zero notifications. When I tap on Rec, the phone vibrates and switches to Rec mode 
and when I tap Rec off, which is the black arrow, it vibrates again and turns off Rec mode. A little addition I've added is turning off my music if something is playing once I trigger Rec. I'm super happy with how it turned out and now I'll show you how you can do something like this yourself. But before I do that, if you want to participate in my next iPhone home screen rating episode where I share your setups, rate them and introduce cool new apps along the way, use the participation link below. Okay, so let's quickly put together this toggle home screen setup. The easiest way to understand how it works is to glance at it behind the scenes and realize that we simply have two almost identical home pages. The difference between them is your choice. In my case, the only thing that I change is switching my mini drawer widget to a similar one that just holds a different variety of apps. But if you decide, you can change the entire layout altogether. So what I'll do first is to replicate my current homepage, going through the exact same steps I did the first time. Adding my large widget alongside the calculator below it, as well as my standard apps, and of course, the mini drawer. But not the first one, instead the second one that I created that holds my other apps that I use when recording around the studio. At this point, you can see that I can simply swipe between both home screens as with any other home screen. At this stage, all I have to do is enter jiggle mode as I need to keep the second home screen I created hidden and reveal it while hiding the first one in the means of focus modes. So let's create a focus mode that I will toggle the home screens with. In my case, I have my default do not disturb focus mode as well as my sleep one. And what I'll do is I'll create a third one which I'll call Rec. But you can call it whatever you like. Once this focus mode is created, I will choose my new second screen to be displayed when switching to it. This, by the way, is a good time to filter your contacts and notifications if you decide to keep everything quiet while in that focus mode. So now when I return home, I have my main home screen, and if I switch to Rec, I see the second one. The final step is to create two shortcuts that serve as a trigger, switching Rec focus mode on and off. To do that, I'll go to Shortcuts and I'll create a new shortcut that I will call Rec. In the search, I will look for set focus and once I select it, I will say turn rec on until it's turned off. It is as simple as that. To spice it up, I'll also add a vibrate as a tactile feedback. While prepping this shortcut, make sure you have not activated the new rec focus mode and while in it, tap on the share icon and choose add to home screen. Here you can rename that trigger to whatever you like and add a custom icon while at it. At this point, if I go to the home screen, I can test the shortcut by tapping on it and boom, rec mode is on. Now, while in that rec mode, I'll go back to shortcuts and I'll create a new shortcut which I'll call rec off. This time, I will say turn rec off and I will again share it on the home screen that I'm currently in and I'll call it Rec Off, and in my case, I'll select a back arrow as a symbol of bringing it back to my normal focus mode. I will position both icons to be situated in the same home screen location for easy toggle. And at this point, we are done. By the way, one hidden shortcut that I didn't mention earlier reveals itself by double tapping on the back of the iPhone. I call it a quick action menu which can be mapped to be triggered by the action button on the iPhone 15 Pro and of course other ways. If you want step-by-step -step instructions on how to create it yourself, head over to my previous installment of the Ultimate iPhone Home Screen episode right here. Like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter and as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is Z, over and out.